So uh, I'm interested particularly in the national implications of the indictment unveiled last week against rap mogul Sean uh, Coombs, Combs, variously known as P. Diddy and other uh, aliases. Um, correct anything I'm getting wrong here. Uh, he reportedly had uh, huge sex parties at his mansion called Freak Offs. It's very important uh, in which he'd bring in male prostitutes and then his guests would have a bunch of sex and maybe some drugs and there would be filming. Uh, and we do know that he in particular although I don't know if it's part of the indictment, uh, has a uh, history of being accused by women of uh, beating them up. Uh, uh, pretty ugly stuff. It all sounds uh, perfectly uh, appalling to my Victorian ears. Uh, but why exactly is this a federal case as opposed to something that the local vice squad might investigate? And why should those of us who are not invited to freak offs care whether the feds are involved or not? Yeah, so I just... It's one of those things where if there are any crimes here, if, you know, if there was abuse of these women, like physical abuse of these women, if there was sexual assault that happened, if there was, you know, um, prostitution, which, you know, obviously is still a crime, even though it shouldn't be um, going on, you know, these would be local or state offenses. And it seems like, you know, they could easily be taken care of at the local or state level. Uh, the feds got involved, though, for a couple of reasons. One, because there's a Man Act violation, you know, Man Act, the old Victorian law that says you can't bring people across state lines for immoral purposes like prostitution. So um, there's a Man Act charge in there. And then they've also tried to get him for sex trafficking and conspiracy because they, you know, it kind of is really interesting. It turns the traditional sex trafficking sort of case on its head. Traditionally, you know, you'd say the trafficker is the person who forces someone into sex work and then collects the money. In this case, it's alleging that, uh, you know, Combs paid money to sex workers who were totally consenting, but that he forced or coerced the women that they were having sex with into it. Um, it kind of lists some ways that that he coerced them that may be legitimate. It kind of lists some that seem pretty dubious, like they took drugs. And it doesn't say that he drugged them. It just says, you know, that there was drugs, but that he gave them drugs to make them compliant. Um, it says, you know, like he told them that he wouldn't help their careers if they didn't participate. These are things that, you know, someone that is a grown adult could agree to or not agree to, but they don't seem, you know, like they should warrant a sex trafficking charge. Um, and he's also saying that, you know, some of the staff that he worked with, they... Uh, rented hotel rooms for these parties sometimes. They brought in all sorts of uh, supplies like lube and like drugs and like all sorts of things. And uh, therefore they are in on this conspiracy, this racketeering conspiracy to commit sex trafficking. So that's the the other sort of interesting thing here is they're, they're using that to go after all of his businesses, um, like Combs Enterprises and Bad Boy Records and all of these very profitable and large and long-standing businesses that he has um, because they're saying that the whole organization was part of the conspiracy. So I think we kind of have an answer there as to why this is uh, being brought as it is instead of as a, you know, just, you know, local sort of a um, crime case because doing that allows them to go after all of the assets that exist, not just from Combs himself, but for all of his, you know, business empire. Is there, uh, so uh, Diddy is not far from where I'm sitting here uh, in Brooklyn, uh, and I think he's being held on suicide watch without bail, um, seems pretty serious. Uh, is there, uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, some uh, kind of a task force within the FBI that is like uh, pointing itself towards sex trafficking? Is there like a funded like division within the federal apparatus to go after this stuff? There is one, but usually that's uh, targeting sex trafficking invol involving minors. I think there's this crimes against children's task force. I think this is just brought by the civil rights division, which, uh, you know, concerns itself with this. Um, I really think that the whole division wants in on, saying that things are sex trafficking cases because like again this is just this is the latest in a long line of cases where it's like i'm not saying that there wasn't maybe some underlying you know abhorrent or criminal behavior going on but it doesn't fit in the pattern of what sex trafficking laws were intended to go after what most people think of as sex trafficking and yet you have it sort of being you know slotted into this sex trafficking case for for seemingly no reason other than sort of opportunism um either in terms of getting assets or getting attention and you have these just like absurd statements like the federal prosecutor said in court like freak offs are inherent inherently harmful. And you're just like, I mean, why? Like sex parties are inherently harmful. So that's like the FBI's business. I mean, it's just, it's again, like there might be underlying criminal activity here, but the way that they're going about it seems like they're really just trying to like confuse everyone with all these Laura details so that they don't pay too much attention to the fact that like the case itself seems for sex trafficking seems really weak so far. If, 
If freak-offs are inherently harmful, then I'm very <laughs> worried that everyone on this podcast is going to be charged. That was a clip from the latest episode of The Reason Roundtable. To watch another clip, click here. To watch the whole episode, click here. And make sure to subscribe to The Reason Roundtable. You'll be glad you did.